He will compete. Vincent Keimer has played the longest games of the event, and Gukesh would like to end his tournament on the right foot. But all eyes, all cameras are on this matchup here, Danya. It's Nodirbek Abdusatarov. It's Jordan Von Forest. Will the Dutchman do his compatriot a favor and take down the Uzbek player? Or will we see Nodirbek Abdusatarov sail to tournament victory? He has seemed unstoppable to this point. Buckle your seatbelts, ladies and gentlemen, and make sure that they are buckled tight because this is going to be a grueling affair. This ain't going to be a quick draw. Quick draws are frowned upon in Tata Steel, and we haven't seen many of them. We've barely seen any at all in the time control. It really caters to some of these long, topsy-turvy affairs as the players receive 100 minutes for the first 40 moves, and then another 50 minutes, and then another 15 minutes on move 60, and... There's a 30-second increment. But more importantly, the clocks have been started. The first move has been made. And Noderbeck of Dusatorov is going to try to complete his greatest tournament performance of his career to date with a dazzling display in the final round. Here we go. And you see that? Jordan Van Forest plays the Sicilian. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean we'll get a very sharp opening, but he is indicating he is willing to fight. He's not just playing a symmetrical position. And we see e6 on move two. So not the Nidorf, not Anish Giri's course on chessable, but we have yet to see what Jordan von Forest has in store for Abdu Sattar. And that can be scary, right? When you're playing this final round game, the pressure is on you. We can see some people taking photos right nearby. Uh, but for Abdu Sattar, we know he's a cool customer. He has a mm -hmm. world rapid championship to his name. He also won Olympiad team gold medal and performed super well on the top board for his country. So he has what it takes, but will the nerves get to him? That's a big question. And Jordan trying to make sure that the nerves get to him through his opening choice. That first move, 1c5, it means so many things, but most importantly, it means Jordan is going to play uncompromised. He is not interested in allowing some sort of quick liquidation. We know that Jordan is a tremendously versatile player in the opening. We've seen him play 1e5. We've seen him play the Karokan very successfully. But both of these openings allow White to liquidate the game in most variations if he desires a draw. Against the Sicilian, there are more positional variations. White could play the Alapin. White could dodge the open Sicilian, those crazy lines with opposite side castling. But Robert, you are almost always going to get some sort of an imbalance. And Black is almost always going to get winning chances. That is why the Sicilian essentially stands alone as the opening that you want to play if you want to guarantee a fighting game. And normally, Nodirbek looks at his opponent. He stares at him, but I think he looked over him. And I'm wondering where in the playing hall Anish Giri is, because that's what Nodirbek has to avoid. It's going to be difficult, but he can't just be looking at Anish's game. Oh, is he <laughs> not going to win? So if he doesn't win, all I need is a draw. But if he's winning, maybe I should also play for a win. You can't get distracted by anything no. besides your own game. That is where your focus has to be. And Nodirbek, Despite being a teenager, he is very experienced. He knows just that. He does not need any advice from little old me over here. Uh, but it is a Sicilian. That means we probably will have a sharp battle. And from the very first move, that's the big question. Danya, if you're a half point ahead, a draw guarantees you at minimum a tie for first. Do you play super solidly, but maybe don't give yourself witty chances? Or do you take a bit of risk and play in like you would if it were round one? Well, the common wisdom is that you, the best way to secure a draw is, of course, to play for a win. But my coach a couple of years ago also shared what I think are very wise words. If a draw satisfies you, 1e4, all things held equal, is actually a wiser move to play than 1d4. That may seem paradoxical. d4 is known as the more positional, the quieter line. But the thing is, variations after 1e4 are incredibly forcing. So if you're well prepared in the Sicilian forest, then you want to go for those sharp positions. If Noderbeck knows what he's doing, they're also likely to go down a long theoretical line. And if Noderbeck emerges out of that line with a good position, then the lion's share of the work has already been done. So I love the fact that you that Noderbeck is not shying away from his main preparation. He took there a little bit of time after E6 to steal himself. Maybe he thought about playing a nice little Alapin or a move like G3, but no, no, no. That's not what he prepared before the tournament, and he decides to stick to his guns. That's what he's done all tournament long. There's no reason to shy away from that in the final round. You know, you missed an opportunity for a pun. You said the Sicilian forest. I thought oh, you said the no. Sicilian v von forest. Early. 
It's yeah, 620. I, I, it's 620 a.m. You know, <laughs> my brain isn't what it used to be, and I haven't had coffee yet. <laughs> I forgive you. And for Nadir Beckham, Dusatarv, and Jordan von Forrest, I mean, you can just tell because typically players, they get through the opening phase, the first five, ten moves extremely quickly. But Abdusatarv is taking his time on every turn. And you can see the photographers, they're you know, making sure that they can catch him on camera. Uh, but Nodirbek Abdusatarov, he has tuned out the world. He is focused on his game here, and he is just playing standard opening moves. But I don't know. I just get this feeling that it's such a tense moment. And when you don't have a wealth of experience just because you're very young, that can be nerve-wracking. On the other hand, Jordan von Forrest has nothing to lose. We've seen that in recent rounds. With the black pieces against Dingley Ren, he took up the mantle from the very first move, sacrificed the pawn, and mm -hmm. everything got chaotic. Then against Anish Giri, he sacrificed Inik Rook for just the bishop, and then that was a tactical melee. So Jordan has proven throughout his career thus far, and that includes a victory in the 2021 Todd Steel Chess Masters, that he is willing to fight no matter the tournament situation. Indeed. And a case in point, in that very same game that you mentioned in, against Anish Giri, yes, he messed up his big advantage, but even in that end game, he declined something like six or seven move repetitions. You could easily imagine a scenario where you admit you've messed up an advantage, you take a quick draw, you go eat some dinner. Jordan is not interested in that. He did everything he could. He pressed all of the buttons available to him. He exhausted every resource yesterday, no matter how long it took. Anish Giri, with some incredible defensive skills to hold the draw in that game. But Jordan signifying that he really isn't all that interested in three or four extra rating points. He wants to make his imprint on the final tournament standings. And he is displaying that once again here with the black pieces against Noterbeck. And we see now the queen coming out to C7, Robert. That can only mean one thing. That means Jordan is essaying the Taimanov variation of the Sicilian, which is along with the Nidorf and the Sveshov, one of the hottest and most popular Sicilian variations in recent years. For sure. And there is a lot of opening theory. And the good news, if you're a fan of Anish Giri's, is that in many of these positions, there's no way to just force a draw. Sometimes, in some openings, it's like if you don't make a draw immediately, the game is over uh, in the sense that you get yourself in trouble. So this 